Okie doke. So let's um, continue um, making mic here. Um, we have up to this point, we finished his head, um, we finished his, um, his arms, and now we're going to start to build the bottom part of his body. So we have to start by um, working on this piece down here. And then this is nothing more than a sphere, and then the legs are probably the hardest part. And there are numerous ways of building the legs, but I'm going to show you a particular way that um, I don't know is the best way of, of making them, but it will introduce new modeling techniques for everybody. It's something to, to take into consideration when you're building your own models. Okay, so let's start with the easy one, <clears throat> relatively easy. It's this bent part down here. I don't know what you want to call it. It connects his head to his body, okay? And if you look at it carefully, um, and that's what I try to do, just like his head. His head looks like a, a, it's a, a cube, you know? Um, so what was this shape before it was bent and flattened and bloated and that sort of thing? Um, to me, it looks like a cylinder. So that's what I've started with. And since I want to be able to bend it like um, I did with his forearm, I wanted to, you know, deform it in some way, I need to add extra slices, extra geometry. Now, for those of you, if anybody's using Blender, you can only do that afterwards. Um, but with LightWave, you can add geometry at the time that you um, make it. Now, you can add geometry later in a variety of different ways, but... <clears throat> I think if you know that you're going to need ge to add geometry, it's best if you do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and move my picture down here. And let's go ahead and <coughs> build a new layer here. Put this one in, whoops, new layer, and then put this one in the background. So I use it for reference. <coughs> and now what I want to do from maybe the right view, let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Okay, that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build this part down here. So I'll start with the create tool and we're going to use the disk and then from the right view I can click right about here so I know it's pretty centered and like so. Try to get the approximate proportions of it. And then from the top view, notice because it's just a plain old flat disk, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out a bit. Um, and just the amount that you need to stretch it out, there's a, it's a bit of guesswork because we're going to bend it up and we want it to fit the top. And probably what I should do before I even do this, um, you know what, I'm going to kill it and I'm going to come back to it because um, in a little bit, what I want to do is I want to be able to use symmetry. Symmetry is a useful tool, um, especially, you know, when you're building characters, but if you don't want, if you want um, absolute balance, symmetry, um, you know, when you're applying an effect or, um, you know, de deformation to one side, you want the other side to be deformed and an identical way. And the only way you can do that is that it has to be, your, your model has to be exactly, exactly um, uh, equal on either side of the x-axis. So to do that, um, I'm going to move it, move my whole model for just a minute here. I'm going to click here. And because I'm working on a, um, a laptop here, I'm going to hit the FN key and then F2, and that centers it in the middle of my universe. So you can see that the whole model moved a bit, okay? But it is exactly centered in the middle of my universe, and that will allow me, and especially everything on this side is the same as on this side, it's balanced. So that when I use the, um, when I start to use the, the symmetry tool, which is found down here, symmetry, or I don't know if it's necessarily a tool, but that feature, 
it will allow me to, when I bend it, to bend it on both sides. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'll come back. I'll move this up and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the disc tool. I'm going to click down here like so. And I want it to start to be nice and round. So, you know, 20 millimeters for me is fine by 20 millimeters. And then I need to stretch it out. And I want to try to get it as close to the same on both sides as I possibly can. And I'm going to stretch it like so. Same thing over here. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I need to stretch it a little bit more. There you go. So it's exactly centered. Um, so what I need to do before I do anything else is you'll notice that the segments are set to one. So that's from this end cap to this end cap. There's a, it's only one segment. There are a number of sides or 24 and I can leave that. That's fine. But I need to increase the number of segments. So using the numeric requester, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag that up and you can see that the segments are now added. I'm going to crank that up to maybe 35, 36, something like that, or even more. Just a boatload of them. Okay, that should, for our purposes, that should be just fine. But that will allow me to be able to bend. If you don't have those intermediate segments, you will not be able to bend your object. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do before I finish this, um, is that looking at this, you can see that it's flattened, isn't it? Okay, so why not just do that now? So I know that I went through that expense of, of trying to um, make it nice and round, but I'm going to go ahead and flatten it. And we'll do a few of other things as well to flatten the thing to get it to work. So there we go. So now we've taken our pipe and we flattened it. And now what I want to do is I want to fix it and then I want to bloat it in the middle and then I want to bend up the sides. Okay, what order do you do that? It just, it, it, it takes, I don't, I won't say experience, but, or practice, but um, it's more experimenting with your models and try to put a plan and it is through the more experience that you have that you'll be able to kind of plan and figure some of these things out. So I'll go ahead and I'll fix it. And now I want to bloat it in the middle. So how do I do that? Um, I'm going to use the, the same tool that I used to um, pump up his arms a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use under modify. This time I'm going to, instead of pull evenly, I'm just going to use the pull tool because I want it to bloat upwards and nowhere else. And that's it. Um, so I need to create a fall off for that. And it's going to be, um, uh, let me do that in a minute. So it's under more down here. And I'm just going to use the pole tool. And then similar to what I did before up here, I want it to be, um, um, the fall off is going to be radial. And I'm going to slide this over so it's a nice smooth parabola. And then it doesn't matter from which sides you use, you're going to have to use um, the top, the back, and the side in order to do this. But then I'm going to right click and drag like so, because I want it to be a fairly smooth kind of bloat. And then right click and move it over just a little bit. And then from the back view, I'm going to right click again. Let me do it from the side view right click like so and then right click and move it down and I only want it to affect the top so I'm not going over the whole thing I'm just going making sure that the the top portion of this is affected and that's it but I'm creating this little bubble that um, overlaps all of it so we should have our bubble ready to go and I'm looking in here and that looks pretty good. And now I can begin to left click. And I'm doing that from the right view and then I'm looking at the perspective view. And you can see how it balloons up a little bit. 
from the, the side. That's just what I want. Now, if that's too much over to the right and to the left, let me zoom in a little bit and see what I've got going here. Uh, that's a bit too much. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Right click like so. Because I don't want to, I want it to mostly affect the top so that it just bubbles in the top and that's it. So now I left click again and I pull it back a little bit and that's not too bad. It's not perfect, but for demonstration purposes, eh, what the heck, let me do it again. Let me right click, make it a little bit smaller. And let's do that again. Left click and pull it back. That looks a little bit better. Again, you know, there's subtle little things that I'm looking for that I want to change. And I get that little bump in the middle of it, just a very subtle bump, and that's it. And I'm happy with that. And again, the only way you can deform it in that way, and when I bend up the sides, the only way I can bend up the sides is by adding that geometry, okay, um, at the very beginning. That's really um, kind of critical. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn off the, um, the, the pole tool. And now I'm ready to use the bend tool. So these are other deformation tools or modification tools. But if I come down over here, I can I select bend. And again, I can control the fall off. Where do I want this bent? Now, if I don't use any fall off at all, and from the right view, I click and I drag and I move it forward. Notice that everything is, is, is bending. I don't want that. I goofed. I forgot when I went back to put this on its, on, on its own layer. So I need to do that. So I'll go ahead and I'll click a few poly, whoops, I don't want to do that. Turn off the band tool. Select a few polygons. And then over under select, I'm going to say select connected. And I'm going to cut, command X to cut. And then I'm going to go to a brand new layer so only it is affected. Now I can paste. There you go. So now when I use the pen tool, it will only affect that which is on that layer. And remember, if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So it's best sometimes just to put something that you're working on in a, in a separate layer and then deal with it that way. So now I can go back in here. And now you go back and select the pen tool. And I want to show you what happens with when nothing is selected or, you know, there is no fall off determined. When I click and I drag, it's just a smooth, even bend. See how you can bend it like so. And then if I wanted to, I could rotate it and I could do all sorts of things. Okay, but I don't want it bent like that. I only want to bend it from, you know, maybe here to here and then have it go straight up. So it's actually sort of a rather gradual curve, and this might take a little bit of work too. So what I want to do is I need to create that fall off. And to do that, this is a linear fall off that I need is that I want the bend to start maybe right about here where my mouse is in the top view, and I want it to end right about here. Okay, and now from the right view, I have to click and drag and pull that down and click and drag and pull that down so that it's centered in the middle of my object here. So now when it bends, when I click like so, there you go. See, it's only bending in that one direction. But I want the other one to bend too at the same time, okay? And actually their bend is a little bit smoother. So I probably want to start the bend a little bit sooner and end it a little bit later. So to do that, I right click and I pull that out a little bit so that it will become a little bit smoother bend. Maybe it starts from here and then ends there and that's it. So now let's try that again. We'll left click now and bend it up. And that's kind of a, and you have to, it's a little tricky. You have to look at all three views, all four views actually, to make sure that the bend is accurate. And that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. That looks believable. Um, I'll pull it back a little bit. And I might have to shrink it a little bit, but I'm good to go. 
So that's where I want my bend. So I'm going to undo. But as I said, I want the other side to bend at the same time. So now I turn on symmetry. And watch what happens when I turn on symmetry. Now when I bend it, they both go up. So I only have to do this task once. And I'm good to go. And that looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. I want to get that fit in there nice. Make, I'm looking at all the views, so that's why I'm kind of pausing here to make sure that it's perpendicular and it's not bent too far in and too far out and to the side or anything, because that's easy to do. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. So we'll turn off bend. But you'll notice it, it kind of sits out a little bit. It's a little bit too wide. So let me turn symmetry off. And now what I can do from the center of my object is I can go ahead and I can select stretch, which is the H key. And if you forget that, it's over here in modify. And now I'll go ahead and I'll just from maybe the back view, I'm going to click and move the mouse a little bit to the left and stretch it in just a little bit. Uh, just a smidge, and that looks pretty good, so that it tucks in there nicely. Everybody see that? Okay. So that looks pretty good, and actually probably it should be moved up a little bit too. So let's unstretch it, and let's move it up a little bit, and again, it's just a lot of tweaking here. So if I hit T for move, let me move that up a little bit, like so. Now I can stretch it a little bit, and move it in just a little bit, and that might work a little bit better. Yeah, I've got a little bit of wiggle room here. So yeah, it was down just a little bit too far. So again, I'll hit stretch. Now I'm going to go ahead and move it in just a little. And that ought to do it. That ought to be okay. Okay. So there's that part. It's a simple part and it needs to be moved over just a tad. So it's centered. Whoop, I don't want to stretch it. I need to hit T for move. Move it back just a little bit so that it's centered over the joint there. Okay. So that looks pretty good. It's, it's tucked into his head a little bit, which I don't like. But that's okay for right now. That'll be all right. Okay. So that looks not so bad. That doesn't look, that looks pretty good. If I, I'll, I'll go back a little bit and I'll remake that. But I want to move on to the body and his leg. Right. Um, any questions so far? No? No? Okay. So hit Q. And I already have the surface. It's going to be um, brass. Look okay. I don't want it to make it the default. And there you go. So now I can cut it. Command X. Now I can go back to this layer and Command V. Paste. And there you have it. There's our little piece here. So now I need to build uh, again, I'm just going to use a brand new layer, put this one in the background, and we're just going to use a big sphere. That's it. We're done. Just a simple um, default kind of uh, ball, and I'll do it from the center here. It's pretty good size, and we're going to stretch it out a little bit, do that from the right view because I can see a little bit better. The orientation of this is not critical, but it will be when we make his mouth here. I don't know that we'll get to that today. Um, but again, what I want to do now is I'm going to make this, to make it a perfect sphere, I'll make it 65, 65, and 65. Your size might be different, and that's okay. You just want to make sure that the X, Y, and Z are all the same. I can move it down into position here, like so.
it's tucked in here just a little bit. And that's it. I'm good to go. Now I'm ready to build the leg, and that's kind of the hard part. Okay. That's probably one of the hardest parts of this. Um, but before I do, hit Q, and let's make it, um, again, chrome, because that's what it's going to be later. There we go. And I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to put it back on this layer here. So I'm gradually building it part by part. So <clears throat> once again, we need to think and decide for ourselves, how are we going to make this leg? What does it look like? <clears throat> and it really, again, it's kind of like it's a, a cylinder. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the foot that, that extends from that cylinder and it flares out, kind of like a pair of bo bell-bottom pants at the bottom. Um, so that's what I'm going to start with as a cylinder. And I'm going to have it pinch at the top. Then I'm going to have the um, stretch tool stretch it out. Um, and again, I'm just going to have it straight. I'm not going to bend it at the, at the joints or anything. That would be a good way of uh, a good time to, to add um, bones to it to be able to do that. We're just going to use it, do our Vitruvian man the way that we've built the arms. Okay. But I'm going to show you a little bit different way of adding the foot. The foot, the way I'm going to add that will be a separate object and we're going to join it together with his leg. And we're going to have to use the weld tool to do that. And in order to use the weld tool, the same number of point, points around the, the circumference have to, have to be the same as what I have on here. Now, so far, we've been using, for cylinders, 24 sides. And that's the default number of sides has been fine. But this time, um, we don't want that many. We're only going to use eight. But in order to bend it, we need to add a bulk load of segments as we did for this top part here. So let's try this again. I'm going to do this from the side view. Let's we'll start the um, cylinder from the side and then pull it out. And then um, we don't need symmetry turned on, but we will in order to have it flip just as we did with the arms. When we're done with it, we'll use the mirror tool. So let's see how far we can get with it today. So I'll start with the disc tool. And from the side view, I'm going to click and drag like so. And move it, try to get it centered here. And I'm going to pull it out a little bit like so. And I'm going to Move it over here, like so, over the edge here. And it's probably just a little bit too big. We want it a little bit smaller. So let me zoom in here in diameter. So I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit. So, and maybe not that much. If I'm having trouble working with this and centering everything, then sometimes it's easier just to use um, the, and I'll use the, the, um, the numeric requester. So I'll make this 20 and 20. Let's see how that works for us. How does that look? Um, no, make it a little bit smaller. Make it 18, 16. Again, proportions are sort of everything within drawing and modeling. And I'm really, I'm looking at the photograph to try to get the approximate proportions that I need. And that looks a little bit better here, okay? There we go, okay. So I've got it stretched out. The length of this, I'm really guesstimating. I'm not sure at all, you know, how big it needs to be. Um, I might have to remake this, but, you know, if I stretch this in a little bit like so, you know, maybe that's adequate. Um, let's try that and see how that works. And again, make sure that I have a bolt load of segments. But before I do this, now you could leave 24 sides, but that means when I weld it to the foot, 
I need to make 24 welds and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to reduce this down to eight. I don't need quite so many. And then when I turn on smoothing or sub patch, um, whichever, it will smooth it all out. So I'm just reducing the geometry here. So now I only need to make eight welds and that will be fine for me. Okay, that's really kind of important. And, and it's not that it has to be that way. It's just that it uh, will work a little bit better for you, I think. Um, it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so I think I have the basics down here. Now what I want to do is I'm noticing here that just at this point, this is sort of flattened just a little bit. So I'm going to, um, what I've done in the past, and it seems to have worked pretty well, is that I've used um, under modify, we've already used this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the pole evenly tool. And so if I zoom in just a little bit here, And I go over, let's see where, right about here. And I right click and I drag. And it's just a little section right in here that I want to flatten. And so from here, I'm going to right click and drag like so, and then right click and move it over that like so. So this little bubble is contained right over that little section there. And now what I'm going to do, again, is I need to check and make sure that it's the radial fall off. But I slide this so that it's a nice smooth. And now I'm going to left click and pull it in and that's not working. So let me switch to the other side and see what we have here. So this is the right side. I'm going to switch to the left side and see if that doesn't work a little bit better. And that's not working for me. So what do we got going here? Um, yeah, that's not working. So let's see. See if I start moving that, see how that's going in a really weird direction. So I need to make sure I've got the right, uh, everything should be good. I have my top view, I have my right view. There's clearly something goofy with this going on here. So let's go, we don't need presets, texture. Um, so let me make sure that this is right. So let me kind of go down here like so, look at it from perspective view, but look down this little section here and see if this is going, how this is going. Yeah, that's not right. So there's something weird going on here. Let me do it from this end. That's not right either. So you know what? Um, I'm having troubles here today. So before I do anything else, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to check and make this again and see what gives. Now, if I have um, symmetry is not turned on, so that's good. Let's go back again, make sure that I have the right tool. I have pull evenly. That's what I want. Um, but something else gives. Something is, is not right here. So I'm going to go ahead and save everything, make sure that I can go back to this. So I'll just say save all objects. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to pause the recording. Yeah. So um, discovering what the problem is, is that um, I didn't put his leg on a separate layer. So the bend or the bloat or whatever you want to call it, the pole is affected. It's, it wants to affect everything. So what I need to do is I need to select a few polygons on his leg, come over to select and say select connected, and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put it on a brand new layer. That should be, you know, just habit. You know, every time you create a new part, 
put it on its own layer. So let's go back again under modify, say pull evenly, and it goes back to the last setting that I use. And now from the right view, when I click and I drag, now it works. See that? So it's only affecting the area that I want. So just a subtle little flatten in here, a little dip in that area. That's all I want. And I can undo, maybe right click and move it a little bit closer in here. Like so. And let's do that again. Let's left click and just make it a little bit dented in like so. You have to make sure that the bubble surrounds everything. And that looks good. I'm, I'm happy with that. So the next thing that we want to do is kind of flatten it and then bloat it. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the stretch tool for that. But again, I need, in order to control what parts of it I want stretched, just like I did with a bend, I'm going to use the fall off, the linear fall off for that. So I'm going to turn off um, pull evenly, and we're going to use stretch. And you'll notice that there's um, no fall off specified here. So we're going to go ahead here, and I'm going to right click and drag, whoops, I don't want to do that. Right click. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, no fall off selected. See, I need to select linear fall off. That's what I want. So let's start by stretching from here, right about here. And I want the it to end here. Just a little, it's going to be very quick. And now from the right view, I need to click and drag and pull this down and take the back part and pull it down so that it's right in the middle here. Okay, I don't know if you can see from the perspective view. But you want it right in the middle of that. And now I can left click and I can flatten it. But notice it's only flattening it from from that point forward. So that's where it ends. And then I want from about the, the knee, right about here, I want it to <clears throat> get bigger. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and drag again, pull that down, right click and drag and pull this right about like so, right about where his knee is going to be. And now I can left click and drag and I can stretch it out like so. Yeah, now I don't want that. You can see how it's flattening that out. So I'm gonna undo and I can either stretch this all the way to here and try that. And that's better. See how it's, it's stretching it out kind of like those bell bottom pants. And now I'm looking at it from kind of a side view and looking at it from the perspective view and everything and trying to get the approximate size that I need here. And that looks pretty good. And now I'm ready to bend it. Okay, so I'm getting close. It's not quite the way I would like it, but it's not bad. It's not bad. And I need to bend it, a very sharp bend from here to here. So I'm going to turn off stretch. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the bend tool. And again, I want linear bend. And I want the bend to start from about here. And I want it to end right about here. I want it to be a very sharp bend. And again, I need to right click from the right view and pull that down. Right click and pull that down so it's centered in the middle here. And now I'll move this up a little bit from the right view. And I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to look. Oops, I don't want that. 
I need to, yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want twist, I wanted bend. So I kind of goofed. Right click, pull that down. Right click and pull that down. And right click and pull that out. Make sure that it, well, I want it a very, I set a really sharp bend. So I'm going to go back a little bit. I mean, you can do that. We can pull it out and you can see how it's going to bend and see how smooth the curve is. I don't want it like that. If you did, you know, then that's the way you go. I want it to be sharp. So I'm going to pull it back like so. So the bend starts here and ends here. So it's a very abrupt bend. Now I can click and drag like so. And that's more like it. That's what I'm going for. And again, just like with the, the top side, I need to look at all views to make sure that everything is perpendicular. And that's about the bend that, I want, that I'm going for. It looks about right. Make, it, make sure that it's perpendicular from the top view, from the back view, from the right view. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and look at this. And that looks pretty good. So this is, this is a bend of his leg going all the way down to here. Just now we need to add his foot. Okay. So this is how you add the foot. So I don't need bend anymore. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create another disc or a cylinder, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it. Um, so where are we at here? I want, there we go, create, and I want a disc. And this is going to be his foot. So about like so. And because I used, you know, eight sides before, that should work very well, but I don't need 36 segments. I only need two segments. How do I know I need two? Because I've done this before. So I'm telling you, make it easier on yourself. And where is the, I can't see, there it is, it's up here. So let's pull this down a little bit like so. And then I need to pull the whole thing down. I'll do it from the right view since the photograph and the backdrop is sort of hindering my um, view of this. So I'll left click and move this down like so. Let's so here. So this is the heel and this is the front. So wherever that is, you can see that that's the front. And I'll stretch that out just a little bit more. Maybe make it just a little bit wider. So yeah, it's pretty good size feet here. And zoom in. And this I do want on the same, um, I want it on the same layer as the leg. And you'll see why in a minute. Because I want to, I'm going to actually join them together. Okay. So again, um, eight to eight. So I'm going to join each of these together um in at the for the um number of segments here the the depth of this i only need two i mean you could get by with one but just experience has told me that two works pretty nicely here so i've kind of distorted that a little bit and i'm not happy with that but you know it'll work for right now so i'm going to go ahead and fix it and now before I can use that tool to join them together, I need to get rid of the end caps. Okay. So I have two separate pieces. Both have the same number of sides. So with polygons selected, I'm going to select the bottom polygon here. And I'm going to hit K for kill. And then I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to select this polygon because I'm not going to need that. And I'm going to hit K for kill. And that goes away. 
And now from, you know, perspective view would, would work just fine for us, actually, because I want to select just two points and I'm going to go around the horn here to join them all together. Okay. Now, this is how this works. This is under detail. And under detail, it is the weld tool right here. In order to weld, you need to select two points first. And it's critical to know which points you select first. I want this point to weld to this. So I select this one first, then this one. If I don't, if I select this one first, and I need to remember to switch from polys to points, if I select this point, and then I hold down the shift key and I select this point and I select weld, watch what happens. Notice that it brought the point back here to here. I want it to go the other way. So I'm going to undo, I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to select just the opposite. I select the shoe or the foot part first, hold the shift down the shift key and then select this one. And now I select weld. So when I select weld here, it joins it together. So that's one of eight. Now think of it, if you had done, if you had left it um, to 28, or I'm sorry, 24 sides, you would have to do it 24 times. Um, and now you wanna make sure that you match point with point. So now I select this one, hold down the shift key, select this one and then select weld again. And then I select this one and I hold down the shift key, select this one and select weld. Whoops, see, I missed. There's something that I did do, I didn't do it right. So let's go back here. Ah, okay, long point. So I'm gonna deselect them. I want, I meant to select the top point, there we go and then this point. And now I can weld. That works. So it's selecting the right ones to weld is also kind of critical. Now I hold, you know, select this one, hold down the shift key <coughs> and weld it together. There we go. So you just do that eight times. Click here, add that point. And it's kind of, it's easier if to, by selecting it in the, the textured uh, perspective view, because if you don't, just like I accidentally selected the wrong, the wrong points, it's more than likely you're going to select the wrong ones in outline view. So we'll go ahead and select that one. And I'm gradually making his foot and joining it to his leg. So I'll go ahead and we'll weld it in light point with light point. <clears throat> so, you know, lots of things to, to take into consideration. Are there, are there other ways of doing this? Yes, there are. You don't have to weld it. I could have built it out of the foot. But I wanted to show you a new tool, that was all. A new way of doing things, of creating more complex structures out of basic structures. Um, so it's just something to think about when you're doing these things. That there are all these different tools that you have at your disposal. And then as you're building something, I generally start and say, well, what does it most look like? Um, what kind of um, primitive? And then start with a primitive and then build upon it. If I can do it organically, then that would be the way to, to do it. You know, that would be ideal. So there's his, his leg with his foot. And now if I need to adjust proportions, I can do that. To smooth it out, the way that you would want to do that is to hit the tab key. And it's going to give me an error message because there's an end gone at the bottom. But you'll notice how it smooths it all out. And that looks pretty good. And then I just add a sphere over the top for his, um, um, <clears throat> his joint, okay? But there's a couple of other little details that I think I would like to, to fix here. And you'll notice that it kind of chisels in just a little bit here. 
So what I can do, I'm going to go ahead and hit the tab key and go back. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to look at it at texture wireframe so I can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this row of points. So if I zoom in maybe from the side so that I make sure that I have them all selected. Um, let's do that from the side view here. Zoom in a little bit. This is what I mean by in wireframe. Um, <clears throat> if I make sure that I have points selected and I lasso around, right click and drag around this row down here, similar to the way we lassoed for the base of the lamp. I have all of those selected. And notice it's selected all the way around. And now I can just use the size tool and make it shrink it in just a little bit. Size, make sure it's from center of selection and pull it in just a little bit. Okay, and I get that little dip in there. And that ought to be kind of nice. That ought to kind of work pretty well. And if I need to move it up a little bit, move all of those points up and make it fit, then that would be okay too. Turn off size, um, deselect, and again, hit the tab key. I'm gonna get an error message and you know, not enough. I want it even a little bit more, or I want it creased a little bit more. So as you're doing that, you know, you're just making subtle little changes. So maybe what I can do is I can select his whole foot. So let's do that from, you know, again, the side view here. So I'm going to right click and drag around here. I'm going to select all of this in here. Now I'm going to hit key for move, and I'm just going to move the whole thing up just a little bit. There you go. And, you know, we'll see. I think that looks, for our purposes today, that looks pretty good. So let's turn off move. And again, let's um, see how it's looking here. So let's move it down a little bit. And let me look at it from this perspective. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Maybe, it, yeah, his foot looks fine. If you need to, you know, deform his foot a little bit, we can. I can always take, you know, the, the top points here and maybe use the drag tool. So with modify, if I select drag and from here, if I click and I drag and I pull it forward a little bit, notice that it's a little bit more pointy like theirs. That works pretty well. Getting the basic proportions here. That's looking pretty good. So now the next thing, um, before we send this over and before we, um, I, I need to make sure that I mirror it. But before I do, I want, I want to assign the textures to it and maybe also add the joint for the sphere. And you'll notice that we have his boot texture, which is red. And we also have um, the brass texture that we use for the upper leg here. Well, remember, every polygon can be assigned a separate texture. So to do that, um, I'm going to start by selecting the bottom polygon here. So I'm going to select polygon. And I want to expand it. So to do that, if I go to select, and I select up here, if I select, um, let's see, I want to expand selection, it should be shift, um, right curly brace. Um, I want to make sure that I'm doing Yeah, expand selection. It's this one right here. So if I do that, notice that it goes up one. So to do it a little bit faster, if I hold down the shift key, and the right curly brace, it keeps expanding that selection. I want to expand the whole thing right up to about his, the middle of his leg, about where his knee is going to go. Okay. Maybe one more time for good measure. Now I want all of this to be red. And then I'm going to invert that selection and make the rest of it 
the um, the brass selection or gold, whatever you chose for yours. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Q, and it will only affect that which is selected. So now I can go back in here, and we already have the red that we've used for his glove, so we'll use it for the boot. And there we go. And now I can go under Select, or actually View, and down here, what I want to do is I want to um, invert the selection. So I want to come over here and let's see. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't want to hide the selection. I want to invert it. Where is invert? Where is invert? I can't think of the key command for it right at the moment. Um, Let me go to selection then. And maybe, yeah, sorry, wrong one. It's in the, the selection tab. So right here, I want to invert it. And there we go. So now the, the opposite polygons are selected. And now I hit Q. And I'm going to go ahead here. And I want it to be brass. I click OK. And voila, we have it done. Now I just need to put a sphere over the center of this, and we'll call it a day. Uh, what am I doing on time? Good, I'm doing good on time. So um, I could go ahead and I'll go ahead and I'll put the sphere on another layer temporarily just for the heck of it. Um, so I'm going to go back under here, um, under create a ball, and I've created a new layer just for the heck of it. And we're going to go ahead and make our sphere move it up a little bit right in the middle here. It's probably a little bit too big. Um, let's make it um, 35, 35, and 35. Again, I want it to be a perfect sphere, so I'm looking at the numeric requester. And again, making sure that it's centered up here. It's probably, like I say, a little bit too big. Let's see in perspective view how that looks. We can always move it around. Oh, it looks all right. Zoom in a little bit. Again, I'm making sure that it's all centered up. Like so. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it's looking all right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it. And I'm going to create a surface for it. And that's going to be chrome for the joints. And now I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to put it on the same layer as the leg. And I'm going to paste it like so. I guess it's a little bit too high. So how do you move it? Because it's on the same layer. Select a few polygons, go to Select Connected, hit T for Move, and from the right or back view, and move it down a little bit, like so. There we go. That looks pretty good. That was just off a little bit. So now we're ready to mirror it. So to know exactly where I need to mirror it, I'm going to hold down the Shift key to make sure that the back part here is selected so that I can see that in the background. And now that these guys are on one layer, the leg, the foot, his joint, I can use the mirror tool. And again, that's going to be under multiply. I'm going to select mirror. And we're going to activate. Okay. And because that was the only thing selected, that's the only thing that was mirrored. I don't want to do that. Got to make sure that I deselect. So let's turn off mirror. I want the whole thing to be mirrored. So select mirror, activate, and reset, activate, and there you have it. Now, the reason I didn't have to move this over at all is because we recentered everything. Um, we centered it in the middle of our universe, so we're kind of good to go. And there we have it. Now, might need a little bit more tweaking, but overall, I think we're doing okay.
And that's pretty much all we want to, all I plan on covering today. Um, again, we're just kind of doing the Vitruvian approach, and this is how you would build your model. You know, uh, um, Chris isn't offering his animation class this semester, but if you're going to animate it, the next step would be after we built this is that you would add the bones to this, and then you would go ahead, and then you could bend, you know, and you could rig his um, his body. And it wouldn't be that difficult to do. But I'll leave that for Chris. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this and put it on the other layer. So cut, put it on this layer. And I'm going to save it. And that's looking like it's about the right proportions. Um, let's zoom out from the back view and see how we're doing here. Uh, the proportions for his legs are a little bit off. They're a little bit skinny up here. They should be a little bit fatter and probably a little bit longer. But for today's demo, it's it's it'll work just fine for us. Okay, so you know some proportions need to be tweaked, and I didn't want this to be cut in up here, so that would need to be changed a little bit. But you know, I I have to consolidate this to one hour to make sure that it works. And I guess the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that this is saved. So I'm going to go ahead and select save. I'll do a save as just to make sure. And we want it. There we go. I'll call it version two just to make sure. So we, if I always have to go back and modify, I can do that. And I'm set to go. So if there aren't any um, questions for today, um, give this a, a whirl, see how you can get, and try to, to match their proportions as good as you can. I kind of went overboard a little bit when I, I flattened and I scrunched it a little bit. It should be a little bit fatter up here and maybe a little bit longer up here too. So, but it's okay, you know, the rest of the proportions look pretty good. Yeah, the legs probably need to be a little bit longer, but that's okay for right now. Again, it's hard to tell from a single view, you know, what you need to do, but um, I'm pretty good, I have a pretty good idea that his legs need to be a little bit longer and that the upper part, you know, I started, you know, changing it here. It should have been changed all the way up here. Um, so that this part from here to here is a little bit fatter. So how would I change that afterwards? Um, if that's the question you may be asking, uh, I wouldn't. I would go back and rebuild it. It would be too hard to take this little part here and to smoothly fix it. It would be easier to go back and to remake the leg itself from scratch. It just you know, as you go, it's a little bit easier. I'm happy with the bend and everything else. I'm happy with the legs. I'm happy with the feet. Just not the upper leg. That's the only part that I'm not happy with here. It could be refined. Okay, so if we're done for today, um, this recording will be made available soon for all of you. Um, if there aren't any questions, I'll stop recording and we'll call it a day. It's about three after. We started about an hour ago. And that's it. Have a good weekend. Give this a whirl. Try to catch up to this part. Um, the next step will be for us to, um, to build his mouth, which is not that difficult. But again, we're going to be using some of the similar tools that we've used, the same tools that we've used before, and some a little bit different. Um, you know, it's all starting with a basic primitive, modifying a little bit, maybe um, adding geometry as needed, um, removing geometry, you name it, and then deforming it. So we're always starting with primitives and then building upon that. Um, anywho, um, that's it. Any questions before we go today, before I stop? Um, um, recording? No? 
Okay. No questions. Okay, well, I got all of you in the role, all five of you. So, um, you know, goodbye for now. And I hope you guys have a good weekend. I hope you guys try this out and are gradually getting acclimated to this. Somebody else wanted, um, on Monday, had wanted um, help with Blender, and I've been working in Blender to try to build this with some success and gradually getting acclimated to their tools and their, you know, approach to model building. So if you want at a separate time, we can do that, and I'll be happy to, to work with you, but you need to be patient with me as I'm learning Blender along with the rest of you. Um, but um, that's it today for today, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.